5 million cash in the bank account, 60 vehicles, 20 properties that included mansions and other expensive commercial real estate, all part of a $50 million empire. The crazy part is, he did all this within three years, and at the end of those three years, the FBI would raid his home and begin the process of taking everything, including his freedom. This is the story of Omar, known on YouTube as Omi in a Hellcat. Omar is going down in history as the best that ever did it. He's going to be known as the Robin Hood of IPTV. See, Omar looked at cable companies as big, rich corporations that like to take the working man's money and raise prices every month, and all they do is provide movies and TV shows. Well, Omar said he was an app developer, and he found a loophole that would provide the same services to the people, 20 bucks a month. The truth is, he wasn't an app developer, and there is no loophole. He would end up facing charges of conspiracy, copyright infringement, fraud, money laundering, and tax evasion. And this is how he did it. With a hustler for a father, by the time he was 13 years old in the year 2000, he already knew how to cook up powder. And with that comes the usual suspects, trials and tribulations causing him to drop out of high school and dedicate more of his time to the streets of Philadelphia. He spent his teenage years and early 20s in and out of the prison system. With a hustler spirit, in those days he made money off DVDs. He would purchase a movie from the local Best Buy or Blockbusters and make thousands of copies of that movie and sell the copies to the average working man for cheap. And for a young man, there's nothing like hand-to-hand -hand cash money. He did good off DVDs until the technology changed. Around 2010, he lost his moms and it was time for him to get his mind right. Two years later, he was in the streets grinding and things started to get better. But two years after that, he was put into a scary situation and ended up being a victim and getting robbed for more than 25000 Omar is a likable guy. He wasn't built for the and treachery needed to be successful in the underworld of Philadelphia. He had to rethink the situation, but he's a hustler. Delivering pizza and washing cars, selling DVDs, whatever it is, he's in it to win it. Technology was changing from the days of blockbusters, and in 2007, Netflix, instead of just a DVD mail subscription service, they introduced IPTV, a service where customers could stream the movie online directly from Netflix into their living room. So seven years later, by 2014, the whole industry had evolved. It included Amazon, who launched the first version of the Fire Stick that same year. The Fire Stick is a device that connects to your television and allows you to stream your favorite shows from your favorite service provider. Omar saw this as an opportunity in a game that he was familiar with. Instead of DVDs, it was now IPTV. What he would do is buy Fire Sticks for 40 bucks and then add his own collection of apps and services then resell the fire stick for double and triple the price. Then he would repeat the process thousands of times. You do the math. It was nice. He started off making five grand a week, then eight grand, then 15 grand a week. In a one year period, Omar made an estimated $1 million. He was getting to the money, all while living in the dangerous streets of Philadelphia. But at the time, his neighbors didn't have a clue. He then took it to the next level. But before we continue, let's get some understanding. The way cable service works is this. A movie would come from the content provider like the cable company. From the cable company to the cable box, the movie would be encrypted so no one can steal the movie. When the movie gets to the cable box, the cable box would unencrypt the movie. The cable box would then add a digital content protection protocol to the HDMI output. So you can't copy the movie, you can only watch the movie. The movie then gets to the television using an HDMI cable, and you can now watch the movie on your television. That's how it's supposed to work. What Omar was doing was this. An encrypted movie would come from the content provider. When the movie gets to the cable box, the cable box would unencrypt the movie. Now it's decrypted, it would go into a device that he purchased from China 
and it would remove the digital content protection protocol so the unencrypted movie could now be recorded with the help of a capture card. It would then turn the movie into a digital IP stream. Now you can send the movie across the internet to a collection of servers that provide content delivery services. With his own collection of movies and TV shows, his customers can go to his website or the app his team of developers created and search for whatever TV shows and movies that are available. When they find a movie they would like to watch, they can click on it. When they click on it, the content delivery service would now stream that movie to the customer. That is not a loophole, and that is not legal. So he was committing um, trademark and copyright infringement fraud. Federal investigators accused him and associates of illegally selling copyrighted material to their subscribers through their platforms and then using that money to pay for the lavish lifestyle that he profiles on YouTube. So with a team that included a highly paid developer, his app named Gears TV had an easy to use interface like Netflix. It offered an amazing amount of on-demand movies and TV shows. It even offered pay-per-view events. It was incredible. He went from making 15,000 a week to 100,000 a week. Some weeks were better than others where he would make 300,000 in one week. The money was coming in so fast he didn't know what to do. Between the years 2016 to 2017, it was the ultimate hustle. By his 30th birthday, he was officially a multimillionaire. It was an amazing amount of brain work to make this happen. He had customer service reps, people to create and maintain the app and the associated websites. It wasn't a cash-only business like the DVD days, so to collect the monthly fees, you now need banks and other financial institutions to process payments. This was a big operation that ballooned into more than 100,000 subscribers at $20 to $50 a month. In 2018, with this much money coming in on a monthly basis, he was able to leverage the guaranteed monthly payments from those subscribers and sell the whole business for $40 million. That same year, he bought another house for $700,000 and accumulated an amazing car collection. After he sold the app to a group of investors, he did the okie doke and went in direct competition with the app he just sold. He built another one, only this time it was bigger and better. It was perfection with an amazing customer interface. He called it Reloaded TV. To grab the attention of law enforcement, he did what the hustlers do. He started showing off jewelry, cars, cash, houses, and trips to expensive destinations. Little did he know that on one of these trips, the FBI came along for the ride. They were keeping an eye on him the whole time. They watched him at the hotel. They kept an eye on who he talked to and where he spent his money. Halfway through the year of 2019, he took showing off to the next level. He uploaded his first video to YouTube for the world to see. For people watching this video, it showed a man on a whole other level with a whole lot of money. Three days after the video was posted, it hit over 50,000 views, and in less than three months, he was at 100,000 subscribers, and the channel just kept growing. A few more months, he was at a half a million subscribers. It was too good to be true. In November that year, which is six months after he posted that first video, the FBI got involved and raided his home. For some reason, he couldn't stop. He would copy the design of a billion dollar shoe company and replace the check for a lightning bolt and called it Air Omi. It was surprising. So he was committing um, trademark and copyright infringement fraud. So at the end of the day, it is stealing. At the end of 2021, he was indicted and facing 500 years in prison. At the beginning of 2022, he pled guilty. Over the years, he acquired over 100,000 IPTV subscribers and collected over $30 million in subscriber fees and sold thousands of pairs of sneakers from which he copied not just the style, but also the name and branding. And in 2023, he was forced to forfeit more than $30 million, then another $16 million in restitution. $11 million to the cable companies, 
$5 million to the Internal Revenue Service. The headlines would read, YouTube star sentenced in cable piracy case. Omar was sentenced to five and a half years in prison. And if he makes it, after he's released, he will receive five years of supervision. After his sentencing, his vehicles, jewelry, and other assets were auctioned off to the highest bidder. It included a Power Rangers wrapped Lamborghini and other high-end vehicles. This was the story of Omar, known to us as Omi in a Hellcat. If you enjoyed this content, click on the next episode from Big City Crime TV.